What's going on everyone? I'm so excited to share with you a project that I started and that's a two rock JM SIG or my um, Fairfield County signature and a one RU chassis and that's specific for the preamp. Now I've noticed online that uh, preamps and two preamps are starting to get become pretty popular and there's a demand for it. Um, it's something that sort of coincidental and also like really kind of got me excited about it because it's coincidental in the fact that I've always wanted to kind of look into this, especially since um, back in the day <laughs> before I talked to Mark at, at Frog Pedals, you know, I've looked at his stuff. He's got some really cool uh, preamp power supplies, uh, switch mode power supply, taking your nine volt DC and then up converting that to, uh, you know, 200 plus volts to power a tube or two. Um, I thought that was really cool because they have an Alembic preamp that he's sort of designed and built and I thought that was really wild and then taking that one step further Peace Hill FX it looks like he's using his own variation of a, a frog switch mode power supply but he's got this really cool point to point product going on uh, which is a two rock John Mayer uh, preamp basically as well and it's got one tube which is super cool um, Mason FX does a fantastic job of this as well uh, but what I've noticed, and, and sort of the chatter on um, the amp garage and stuff, you can see Mason uh, FX doing some research here, which is cool. He's contributing back to the community, is that there's some chatter about, you know, that's great uh, using one tube, but you're kind of losing the other part of the circuit where the, the reverb is dragging the signal down. It's going to make a difference. Um, you know, Guy from Guy Amps up in Canada he even chimed in and says that he's built a non-reverb version of his John Mayer SIG, basically. Uh, and it did feel different. It sounded different because it lost some of those extra tubes. And I don't know about you, but like the real estate on my pedal board to have, you know, a piece of FX, that's just not something I want to invest in that sort of real estate. So what I'm thinking is using a one RU or rack unit chassis such as this and being able to stuff the internals such that we have as many tubes as that I could fit in here, which is, you know, 19 inches. So I should be able to fit as generally the size of a, well, it's a little bit smaller overall without the ears to be about 16 inches in here, usable space. And I noticed and I saw a two rock Eli one. Uh, in my news feed and that was kind of cool. I think it was Tracy Farmer. If you follow him on Instagram, he's got some really cool gear, but that was sitting on top of his Dumble, a real Dumble, and it looks sharp. And I thought to myself, well, that would be kind of a neat sort of application. I don't want a preamp on my pedal board. I want to have it pretty close to my amp because, you know, for example, if I want to experiment with a new preamp and I already have like a power amp, you know, kind of the, the main bulk of, of the expense of a, of a pedal or of an amp is in the power side and the big transformers and such. So if I can sort of play around with a preamp and already use an amp that I've already built or have around. So if you have like a two rock lying around that with a amp in or power amp in section or even heck, heck, Take a, a solid state power amp and drive it with one of these style preamps. I think that's pretty cool. It'll definitely open up a lot of possibilities. Um, if you do know Dumble a little bit deeper than what you've seen, very uncommon is that he has this project called Project Phoenix or is Phoenix. Basically, it's a overdrive special, Dumble ODS inside of a one RU rack unit chassis. Um, RU stands for rack unit. I'm not being redundant. I'm just for those who do not know. Um, and also this is the same footprint that he uses in his Dumble later. So it, it feels right to me to be investigating in this section um, of things. So what I've been doing is a lot of research on power supplies and things like that. It, I was inspired when I saw a London Power, londonpower.com. Basically, they have this really cool preamp section where they are doing things and they have a power supply that uses these really low profile Hammond transformers. Cause that was sort of discouraging me leading up to finding that as I didn't really know what I was going to do for the power supply. Um, 
especially to be able to fit inside that chassis without any sort of external or making it super heavy. But it looks like, um, you know, inspired by that technology and what they're, you know, putting together, I might be able to figure something out here. Um, and, and definitely, you know, being able to stuff everything in there. What I'm approach, my approach on this is kind of combining all those things I just talked about. And here you can see my faceplate that I've sort of, it's just a mock-up at this point. And, and this is not at all um, something that I've really made traces on. I'm just really stuffing the preamp here um, and the circuit, trying to get the schematic right. So then I can um, update the drawings here of the connections and then sort of poke around and move around all the little capacitors and resistors to fit in vertical fashion. So one of the popular things to do with preamps is to fit them vertically. So then in the chassis, they stand up and everything's kind of nice and internalized that way. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get away with that. The circuit's kind of big, as you can see, and I only have 16 inches wide to work with and that's not counting any sort of power supply. So this is really like in development and I'm just pulling back the curtain a little bit on the R and D cycles, research and development cycles on this. So, and, and I've sort of lightly have the front panel already done here or thinking about like what the layout would be in the front panel. Um, but definitely, you know, for my silk screen standpoint, I believe this is what we're going to go with. And that's largely, um, inspired by the look of the two rock John Mayer SIG, um, or my Fairfield County signature, as you can see, but kind of making it a little bit in the Dumble world. Uh, where you see like the deep mid and, and bright switch uh, in a row. I just don't simply have enough room to put those toggle switches on top of the pots. So um, I kind of wanted to keep honest with the uh, Dumble inspired sort of design. And, and plus, this is something I can build off of in the future. The knobs are going to be mini chicken heads because full size, it could work. But then I'm sort of losing out on the um, like the treble, middle, and bass. And also, I can use mini skirted knobs. So <laughs> looking like a dumble in the future could be very, very easy and possible. Or for those who might want the aluminum skirted knobs instead of the chicken heads, or the mini chicken heads. So, and and what's kind of neat, and I, I love doing something I'm not familiar with because I end up finding new things. And one of those things I found was if I'm going to mount this board, or, you know, this isn't it, but, um, you know, if I'm going to design a board, I'm going to want to have it vertically mounted. And how can I do that securely? So I found this keystone, I think it's a 7790 um, part, and you solder it to your board, and then it's a threaded sort of um, nut. I, I guess it's a fixed nut. So if I have those strategically located to prevent the board from flexing, if you remove a tube, then that could be pretty cool. Um, that then that's sort of my plan on that is, is to try to make this as robust as possible. I don't really know, and I haven't done a trace yet or, or routing uh, any of these components to know if I'm going to successfully be able to have a vertically mounted, I guess this is my preferred method. Um, so I don't have any wires going to a separate daughter board just for the tubes. So this is my preferred approach. I'm going to give it a try and see how far I can get it. And hopefully it works out in my favor. Um, and if it doesn't, then I'm perfectly comfortable going with, and it's definitely my hip pocket with, with a horizontal layout of the circuit boards, because I've already done that. It's basically what I see in my amps. And then I'll use those Keystone 90 degree standoffs uh, to, to hold that tube socket really secure, uh, to the, to one of these chassis, maybe even use the holes. So it was kind of neat on this particular Hammond enclosure. It's really solid by the way. And it has, um, these perforated holes in the bottom. Um, so for, you know, if I'm good with my spacing, you could just use those holes to uh, do your alignment uh, for the board. So that's my plan. And, that, and all this video is, is just sharing my plan and, and sort of what I'm thinking for 2023, because that is right around the corner, isn't it? Um, you know, I'm verifying everything with all my layouts and all my research here, I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, for the 
for the chassis, the front, what I did is I went through um, my old, this is actually a Dumbleland um, number nine uh, chassis that I built or a long time ago. I never actually got it physically built, but I built it virtually. And I used these measurements to, and then scaled it accordingly to get basically what we see here on the front panel. Um, oh, that's an old one. And then I took a look at what I've done with my older JM SIG chassis and face plates. Um, and I borrowed some of the fonts and the spacing for that. And again, scaled it all down. So the front panel is familiar, but it's, you know, it's got to be its own thing because of the size. So I can't do a direct one for one. Um, trying to think if there's anything else to really talk about here. Uh, while going through the exercise of, and it's very, very painful. Like I think I'm already 80 hours in on this every morning instead of soldering stuff and building new things. Um, I'm virtually building the next circuit board, but it, it's been taking a while to get all the footprints because I have to build my own footprints for every orange drop capacitor, things like that, especially all the component selections to be as close to the original John Mayer SIG as possible. It's all custom. So I'm doing all this by hand, uh, including the schematic. And this does give me an opportunity to go back into LT Spice and my uh, simulation of the John Mayer circuit and then make some updates accordingly based on what I'm um, now going back and looking at, you know, layouts that I've done, layouts that Taylor at Amplify Nation has done, um, and then combine that to be an accurate LT spice as well as being accurate for this endeavor on Easy EDA. Um, I haven't done a full video yet on, you know, how to use Easy EDA. So I did something also that I want to do in 2023 is sort of walk everyone how to build your very first pedal. And what I'm thinking out loud is kind of uh, inspired by, you know, supporting police and our friends in blue by calling, by basically giving out and we're going to one for one build an original um, blues breaker. And I'd like to, I'm thinking of calling it something along the lines of like, back the blues breaker or black the blue um, and then sort of have a homage and, and awareness of, of supporting our friends who wear uniforms. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. And then that way every, it's a free project. Everyone can learn how to build their own circuit board. And if there's something that you want to do, um, hopefully it inspires you to be able to take that as a launching pad and do something for yourself. All the files will be available for free. That's what I'm thinking out loud. Um, and then we can build it and, and all that stuff. So I, I hope you're kind of interested in this. Um, I'd love to do a steel string singer preamp after I do this. One of the challenges I'm going to have, I'll be honest with you, is I'm trying to figure out what the heck to do with the reverb. Cause I don't think that those little power supplies, those Hammond's power supplies is going to be able to power a transformer. And then we got a big, huge, you know, transformer. So what I'm thinking is doing a digital reverb, not a digital, but like analog using those Belton bricks or even Belton has these little tiny pedal size reverb tanks now and trying to figure out how to integrate those into this. So version one is going to be, it's going to have everything there. So if you go back to my schematic, I'm building the blocks to either connect a true, a one for one John Mayer SIG, Fairfield County signature, um, reverb, or you just tweak some of these values is what my hope is. And then have a small little reverb tank or something, some other circuit inside here, and it would be tube driven. So we're still getting that proper dry signal all the way across. So regardless if I fail a niche initially or, or just, you know, have to take a break and not succeed on integrating my own uh, reverb or there's more to learn uh, later on, it the circuit will work 100% in a true one for one uh, preamp tone of the dry signal because the reverb tubes are going to be there loading down the proper parts of the circuit. So it will sound 
this should sound just like the preamp out of my John Mayer SIG with the dials down for reverb. So that's my plan. I hope you stick around and I hope everyone has a happy holidays and New Year's. And there's my dogs barking. So it is time to go.